Hey, what is up everybody? Hey guys, this is Christian coming at you. Today we're going to be talking about the 10 Facebook tips. Guys, uh, I was much like you, many of you, where I was just putting money against the wall. And, uh, you know, Facebook was fine taking my money and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how to really make it, you know, really produce something, develop something. Sometimes we get so overcomplicated with so many different of like the ins and outs and Facebook gives us so many different options that we can kind of you know, filter out our audience and sometimes we don't even know who our audience is and so these are some of the tips that I found that work, that stay consistent uh, and that are you know simplistic. It's, it's a lot more simpler than you think it is and I think that's the reason why I like it and that's the reason why we're able to scale our business from where we're at. Guys, yes, we I am in Panera right now. So I apologize for any of the noise or anything like that, but I just want to share this with you because I thought this would be very valuable for our audience. So today we're really going to be talking about, um, you know, tip number one is conversions, okay? That's our campaign objective, period, dot, exclamation point. Basically and always. Occasionally on a retargeting ad, we'll do some traffic, but the rest of the time it's a conversion campaign with leads as the goal. That's our goal, is leads, gaining and developing leads. Now, Facebook's smart, so let them figure it out, okay? Trust me, they will. Number two, news feeds. Still by far the best bang for your buck. Uh, news feed only ads with a picture or a video. We don't try to get too fancy with it, very limited. We have some uh, pictures and videos that we've developed that we realize are the best producing, so that's really good. Our system has is, is done that. Now, we really don't mess with any other option or placement like you know instant um, instant articles in-stream videos write columns suggested videos Instagram audience network messenger ads none of it why because when we do that nothing nothing develops and it costs us a lot of money so what we found is that's the most successful route news feeds tip number three all devices no need to get cute no need to say mobile this you know desktop that only when connected to Wi-Fi, uh, just leave it alone. Just boom. All devices. Tip number four: Golden Ratio uh, is about a one million person audience per one thousand in daily spin. That's the sweet spot. When you start hitting that, that's where you really start cranking in the conversions. Okay. Now, what happens as you get away from that ratio? So you spend a hundred dollars a day and run that to one million Persian uh, person. Uh, potential reach audience well it'll probably do fine it's when you get on the other uh, on the other way uh, the results suffer like let's say you're spending two hundred dollars a day and you run that to a twenty seven thousand person audience more than likely you'll you'll get bent over okay so go easy on your narrow don't don't get too focused uh, I've I really realize that sometimes you think oh my gosh two three million people that's kind of big well, see, it's a pool of people. And some of those people are in that market at that time and some people aren't. And so you just have to, that's the reason why you have it larger. And then Facebook with their pixel and their algorithms will work to who is your target audience, okay? So Facebook's smart. Now, they'll steer it into the news feed of your best buyers without you being all like, you know, must be 33 to 37 years old and live in one of these five cities and like like butterflies and country music but not vodka oh and must like Tony Robbins too but relax so give them some room to work and let the algorithm work itself with the picture okay tip number five theme okay I was guilty of this so so much uh, I would I would have a Facebook ad about this and then I changed on the squeeze page and then on my funnel and then I, I, I changed something else and nothing would be consistent along along the line so you know, just have a consistent theme. Like each ad should be based on a single big idea. Don't have a ton of little things like, oh, I could do, 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 one big idea, one big domino that could help solve whatever the issue your target audience is going through. Okay? Think back to when you opted into this, you know, into obviously uh, our side hustle. Okay? What made you click on that ad? You know what, what? What was the clicking point? And as you notice throughout our funnel, it was all the same thing. Consistently talking about side hustle, home-based business, and how to build something substantial. So I guarantee everything lined up, like I just said, from image to headline to body copy to squeeze page. So everything needs to line up. Number six, long, long copy. You know, um, I when I started Facebook ads, I didn't realize that this was the key. 
um, you know, don't get me wrong, you still have to kind of identify it and, you know, make your own little thing that hits with the audience, that's fun, that's entertaining, that's obviously brings curiosity. Um, you know, what I recommend is, you know, if, if you can hire a, a copywriter, definitely do so. However, though, there's so many different tools and systems to help you, definitely if you're starting small. Uh, and there's also a lot of uh, done-for-you copies, uh, copy scripts that are already uh, proven to work. So definitely keep an eye out for that as well. So, but long copy for the win when it's fire, of course. We've never ever ever had a short copy ad outperform a long copy. Uh, I've never uh, went out there and did ding ding ding, and then all of a sudden it was you know four lines, and it would actually produce something. It, it did not. You got to st uh, straight strut through news feeds, okay? So just um, slopping down some long-winded stuff because you know we said so. That's not going to cut it. The one exception. On retargeting ads, you can go shorter, okay? Um, because what happens is when they already know your objective and they already know your story, then you can kind of come in with a, you know, with a, a punch and another punch to bring them in, to re-engage them. Tip number seven, honesty. Um, just, you can't create ads that sound too good to be true uh, and just leave it at that. Um, expect strangers to take your word for it you know you, you don't think oh my gosh you know it's just gonna sign up and we'll, we got the success no be honest with them say it's gonna it's gonna cost money and only those that are in and what you're doing is you're filtering people you know uh, you you have to balance it out with the good and the bad at the very least state what's it in for you okay for example yes at the end of the video I'm gonna try to sell you something yes it's expensive no you don't have to buy it that alone is magical stuff because what that does is already filters people that, oh, I have to buy something. Oh, they're going to sell me something. But guess what? You're only looking for attractive buyers that are already interested in that, um, in what you, you have to offer. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Tip number eight, less. Surprise, surprise. Is more, especially when it comes to squeeze pages. So less, okay? This is something that, man, I, I remember I would create a squeeze page and a funnel and man, it would look beautiful. And then all of a sudden, I started researching and realizing that, okay, actually, the most simple squeeze pages and funnels are the best. They're not with all the bells and whistles, it's very consistent. And it just creates results. And really, like, at the end of the day, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you want a really pretty you know, funnel or do you want a successful funnel? And those are the two options, right? For some odd reason, the ones that are very simplistic, get down to the nutty gritty, they work the best. Uh, so for the love of God, stop loading them up with bullets, definitely on the squeeze page, bullets, pictures, subheads, and crap like that. Uh, I'm telling you, use the same picture you use in the ad as your background image for the entire page. Tack on a short headline, like side hustle, right? And take on a sh uh, short headline and then as well as with the, with a place to enter their email. Don't have their name, their phone number, their blah, their address, you know, just their email. Boom. Then a big button. And boom, that's it. It doesn't really matter what color the button is. Just put a big button. And the closer it is to naked, the less you'll pay your per lead. Try it. You'll see uh, right now we're paying about $3.60 per lead. Uh, and that's on average what normally. I'd like to get it down, but again, I'm pretty satisfied with it was from before when we wouldn't get any leads. I'd spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars bringing people to my squeeze page and nobody would opt in. And it just got so frustrating, so stupid. So tip number nine, do not touch it, okay? Once an ad is live, let it be. Going in and editing it almost always throws it out of whack. And multiple edits within the same day, I mean, just put it this way. I'd rather eat dinner with the dumpster behind Taco Bell you, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's the point. Just leave it alone. I, I can't explain to you how many times I've sat there and I, I push. First of all, I would be one of those people that would be like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend $100 in one day. And then it has impressions, but then nothing creates. And so then I switch it and spend another $100. But I didn't realize that it's consistency. So imagine you spend you know, that $100 over a period of time, but what happens? 
now you, the, the algorithm will work and identify your target audience. So that's what's so powerful behind it, okay? So, you know, if, if, it, if it totally bombs, if there's no squeeze, you just have to reassess, but for a period of time, okay? Normally about four days to five days, that's where you really want to see, okay, hey, is this working, is this not? We have to identify and figure out the kind of the tweaks and, and edits. Now, however though, if you have a, a funnel that works and you follow the other other things that I've I've just talked about, keeping it simple, keeping you know email, keep it, you know just focus on lead conversions. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Let it run, and if, if anything, you know, spend more money and get more leads and produce better outcomes. I mean, that's really what it is. See, and number ten goes right into it is scale. You have to scale. Pretend you follow the previous nine tips, okay? And all goes well. You start having a fun that's producing. Your news feed only adds trotting along at $75 per day. Opt-ins are trickling in at six, okay? Calls are being booked at $83. Nice. Now how do you scale? Simply make a 1% look-alike from your leads, okay? Create a new ad with a new hook and launch it at a higher daily spend. What that did is you took this huge massive audience, you started with like a million, you brought it down to those that were already interested, and then you create a look-alike audience just like that on Facebook, and you drive that, okay, with a different hook, different copy, okay? In other words, we've never had good luck upping the spend on a winner that's already run, okay? We don't just, just keep increasing and keep increasing and keep increasing. But you also got to be careful with overlapping audiences, okay? So say we let the $75 winner run, okay? Came up with a new theme, found some new targets, launched at $300 a day. But by day two, it too is setting into a nice groove. So we start to see, okay, leads are coming in, better ratios. That's about the extent of what we'd, we'd have running. Plus or minus a retargeting ad if, if that's necessary. We wouldn't try to launch another ad to a slightly different audience. We do not want to do that, okay? And then another and then another. Because when, when with different targeting, there's gotta be overlap within the audience, okay? And what happens is you start competing with yourself, which just makes sense, you know, you're running an ad, you're targeting that same audience, you're running another ad, you're targeting, and, and you're kind of, you're confusing the audience, okay? And without even realizing it, and, and um, pretty soon everything's getting more expensive, and some ads don't run, even though they're approved, and you can't figure out why. And that's about as cool as a canker sore on the tip of your tongue. Like nobody wants to do that. So we may be extreme, but on most days we'd have one lead gen uh, getting ad going, and one retargeting ad going. So we have one lead generation and one retargeting ad. And that's it, simple as that. I mean, whenever an ad launches, it it's, is where it stays. If, if it's uh, set to spend like $1,000 on day one, that's where we'll be on day 17. And when we're ready to go to $1,500 a day, what do we do? We start fresh. New ad, new hook, new audience, set to spend $1,500 per day, uh, but we killed $1,000 per day, makes sense. Okay, uh, right now what I do is, you know, some of you guys are smaller home-based businesses, and I understand that side hustles, you know, you guys don't have that kind of income. Uh, so what I recommend doing is driving for Uber, going around DoorDash, taking that money, and putting it toward, um, you know, about $100, even to like $15 to $50 a day to scale your ads, to reach more, a larger audience. And the numbers will start rolling in. And 10 leads, you have one, one lead will actually schedule a call and that's about 50 bucks a, a day or something like that so I mean 50 bucks a, a call and so you know that's really what you have to do and you know the, the more amount of money you spend uh, in one day the more outcome you'll get it's just a lot of large numbers so guys I hope you add I hope this is able to add value to you hopefully you take this this information and apply it uh, it was night and day when I figured this stuff out. You know, I can't, I can't foot stomp it enough where we get over complicated with all this stuff. I mean, there's, there's tons of tools and we can have all these cool little you know, bells and whistles, but 
you don't want to confuse your audience. You want to keep it very simple. And definitely as a you know, home-based business and entrepreneur, you want to make sure that you keep it simple, consistent, and steady. And um, you know, you run the crap out of it and make it happen, guys. So if you guys want to go ahead and subscribe and like, only if you're ambitious and motivated, we definitely would, would appreciate that. Also, if you want to be applied uh, to be mentored and coached running a home-based business and side hustle, definitely reach down on the bottom there. There should be a, um, a link attached. But guys, thank you so much. Uh, share this with your friend, your teamwork, uh, team member, or anybody else that you think would be uh, find this valuable. Until next time, guys.